So our first part is what exactly is a virtual set? Um, so basically a virtual set can refer to any number of technological tools which seek to simulate a physical television, movie studio, conference room, or any other 3D environment. Um, the important thing is a virtual set um, involves combining green screen technology from whatever is being recorded and wh whoever is being recorded with a digitally designed um, image superimposed around the video recording. Um, so the important thing to remember with this is all basically anytime you do a virtual set, you do have to use green screen. So then, of course, the next, what is green screen? So green screen, which is also known as chroma key, is basically the process of mixing two images together. I um, mean, that's when a single color, which is usually green, um, can be blue, and actually it's been known to use even other colors for some things, other types too. Um, basically, you remove that color from the background, and then one image replaces it. So as you can see, the example to the right there is some, a guy, actually that's Jean-Claude Van Damme, filmed on green screen. And then it's easy to cut out that green and replace the background with any image you want. So then what are the advantages of using green screen? Well, it can be much more cost effective than building a real set. Um, particularly if you're gonna build something more, say in a sci-fi action-y type thing, because that would be very expensive to build something like that. So that allows you to create something out of dig you know, digitally that could be extremely expensive to actually physically build. Um, it also is very fast to set up and change a virtual set. Um, instead of, you know, a real set, you have to redesign it. But with that, it's easy to make changes, you know, in Photoshop or other software. Um, it's very flexi flexible and customizable. Basically, it's the same thing. You can make changes to it, um, any changes you want, change the shape of it, change the angle of it. There's a lot of things you can do with it that you, once you build a physical set, you can't really do. Um, it allows you to simulate multiple cameras. And basically what this means is most of our virtual sets come with a whole bunch of different different angles. So you can actually make it look like the cameras, as you're editing, make it look like the camera's moving positions when it's really just, just the virtual sets at a slightly different angle for you. So it allows you to do that very easily. Um, it's also perfect for picture-in-picture -picture presentation. So if you're doing something that's more um, like a conference or something like that, um, or you know a school project, something like that. You can do a lot of picture-in-picture -picture stuff, which we'll actually show later in the um, webinar to show you how that works. And it, so it allows you to do some pretty cool stuff with it. So what are the basics you need to film and edit virtual sets? Um, first thing you need to start with is video editing software. Um, and it has to be able to, the software you use has to be able to support multiple video layers. It has to do chroma key and alpha channels to do it and if you have the software that does it, having a 3D camera in the software is a really nice option. Um, today we'll be using After Effects for the most part, and that does have a 3D camera, so we'll show you how to do some pretty cool stuff with that. Um, but also, they actually the HitFilm 3 Express, which we'll show a little bit too, which is actually free, also has 3D camera support. So it's a really nice feature, and it doesn't necessarily mean you have to spend a lot of money to have it. Um, you also, of course, need a virtual set background layers. Um, you can create a virtual set basically out of just a simple stock image um, and just superimpose that behind your person. Um, it's possible, but the more advanced ones are also multi-angled, multi-layered virtual, basically virtual environments. So they're basically entire sets that um, you can move around in. But um, it's basically anything you can think of, anything you can, anything you can imagine, you can kind of basically create a virtual set out of it. Of course, you need a camera. Um, and there are tons of options. I think um, our panelists today will probably post a link here in just a minute. They give you some little bigger rundown on the different types of cameras you can get. But um, basically, a good way to look at how to what camera to get if you don't have one yet is most of the time, the more money you're going to spend, probably the better image quality you're going to get. However, with the advances in technology, you know, if you're just using your phone, it's probably going to work perfectly fine. So Yes, you can spend money and get a nice camera, and if you're really into it, that's a good thing to do, but, you know, it's okay just to use your phone to do this, too. And next, you're going to need a green screen, of course, um, and then you will also be needing lighting. Um, and again, this is kind of like the camera. Um, you can use just natural lighting, the sun. You can just use the lighting in your house, um, but if you want a really more high-quality image, it you can get um, actual 
lighting made for doing video. And that will improve the look of it and allow you to be more creative with the lighting too. But it's not necessary to do it. It's just, it's a nice thing to have though. Um, and the next thing is, if you're gonna be doing audio, you're gonna need microphones and a sound capture device. So um, pretty standard stuff. Uh, kind of the next thing I just want to cover real quick is um, if doing live broadcasting or offline editing. So basically the virtual sets will work with these um, live video mixers, which are include TriCaster and Wirecast. And basically what they're designed to do is to um, allow you to stream your video live over the internet. So, and it, they work with virtual sets. So you can do like a news report live over the internet um, using one of these pieces of software. And our virtual sets work with, and almost all virtual sets work with that type of software. Then the other option is using nonlinear editors. And that includes like um, the After Effects and Final Cut, Vegas, HitFilm, all those software. And what they do, how they're a little more powerful than the live broadcast is they allow you to do a little more editing um, and create a more... Um, you know, you can do a little more advanced stuff with them, but of course you can't do it live. You'll have to, you do the editing, you render it out, and then you upload it. So depending on what you do, those are your two choices for for doing virtual sets. So now I just want to cover kind of the different types of virtual sets that we carry. So as you can see, we have quite a few from newsrooms um, and sci-fi, Halloween, industrial. And all, all of our web, our virtual sets come with um, multiple angles um, to allow you to kind of do that, make it look like there's multiple cameras and things like that. Um, however, this is what we carry, but there are tons of other ones that are out there that other people make. Um, there's no reason you can't make your own virtual sets too, as we talked about from just a stock image even. Or if you want to get more advanced, you can use 3D editing programs like Cinema 4D, or Maya or something like that to actually create them. Um, they're definitely more complicated programs, but if you want to learn that and get into it, you can create absolutely any type of virtual world you want. So next I just wanted to cover some tips for how to shoot a virtual set. So the first thing is light the scene to match the set. So basically what that means is you just want to um, kind of think about what you want the image to look like at the end. So if you're doing like, kind of a sci-fi looking thing or kind of industrial looking thing, it's probably gonna have a, like a darker look to it. So when you're shooting your your um, your actors and stuff, you're gonna wanna kind of light them to look like the virtual set looks and the feel you wanna go for. If you're shooting like just a newsroom, you probably want it nice and bright and light, you know, and, well, and evenly lit. And of course then for the more sci-fi stuff, you might probably wanna go with like a harsher lighting. So think of that, Think about that stuff before you start shooting, so you kind of get the looks to start blending together. Uh, next thing, ang angle the camera to match the set. So basically, what this means is, like I said, in our in our virtual sets, they come with multiple angles. So again, before you start shooting, kind of think about what angles you might want to use. Um, some of like our newsrooms have a like a 45 degree angle, so you can look straight on, or you can also use the angle that's more at 45 degrees. So you'll need to adjust your actor to look like they're kind of sitting at 45 degrees to match that scene of the virtual set. So think ahead of which ones you might want to use and then make sure you get the shots you need for that. Um, another really cool trick is draping desks and podiums with a green screen. As you can see, that's an example we have here in the picture here. So what you can do is just throw a green screen over a desk and then that allows the, your person to rest their arms on it, put paper or any other something else on it, and when you bring that into the virtual set, which you'll see in just a few minutes when we go over it, is it really adds a realism to it. So it's a neat little trick to do like that. And to continue on that thought is using props to help sell the scene. So when you film for a virtual set, it, it really adds to the realism when you use real objects. When the If you have actors and stuff, if they can interact with real objects on the virtual set, it just adds to that realism to it because it's not just the person and the virtual set. It, there's real things that happen on there too. So if you can think of different props, and again, this is a good example of the picture. There's paper sitting on the desk. You have a pencil sitting there. and then But you can even get more advanced things they can interact with. And it just really helps sell the entire scene. Uh, another good tip is move the actor, not the camera. So basically all that means is like I talked about when there's multiple angles, 
you don't need to like readjust your camera and move it all around. Just basically, you can just turn your actor, and if they're sitting at a desk, just turn the desk to match the angle, so you don't have to keep moving your camera. So it's one of those nice things with a virtual set. It kind of can simplify your shooting. Um, also, part of that is shoot as close up as possible. And basically, what this means is you get um, you can lose quality when you zoom in on a, an image. You can start to lose quality. You can pixelate. So if you start by shooting your video as close as you can to your subject, um, then you're, you know, and if you need the full body, if you're thinking about that, then you still need, of course, to get the full body, but get as close as you can so they fill the frame. That way, um, later on, if you need to zoom, it's easy to zoom out, basically. So if they need to be a little bit smaller in the virtual set, it's easy to zoom out from them um, than zoom in. So that's why you want to shoot as close as possible, to, but still, of course, get the angle you want. And then the last part is sound is 50% of video. Basically, this means is just do your best to not, if you can, I should say, don't try to use the um, audio on your camera or your cell phone if possible. And I know that's not always possible, but if you can get a hold of a nice recorder, um, you know, or a lav mic or a shotgun mic or something, it just sounds a whole lot better if you can do that. And like I said, I know it's not always possible, but you can get them all that kind of stuff now much cheaper. So if you if you can do that, it, it just really adds to the quality of your video when the sound is really good. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I guess there the microphone was popping just a little bit. So just gonna adjust that a bit. I apologize for that. So um, if it happens anymore, please somebody let me know, and we'll, we'll I'll do my best to fix that. Um, next thing is we're, as you can see, we're going to do a prize drawing. So um, our panelists are going to um, pick a, some random people out of the audience, and we'll, they'll get emailed. Um, so we're going to give away a $100 gift card for, for use for anything in the store. Um, we're also going to be giving away a couple of our virtual reality set bundles. And we will, and for everybody who doesn't win, um, everybody can use the 15% store-wide promotion code right there. It's VRSAVE15. So if you type that in during a checkout, you'll save 15% on anything you purchase in our store. Um, and that offer is good until October 9th of this year. So um, as our panelists pick out the, um, the um, winners of that, congratulations to them. Um, hope you enjoy the virtual sets and spend, get whatever you want with $100. So and like I said, they'll they'll email you um, the winners um, shortly here and let them know. So before we get started um, on doing the actual demo of the virtual side, I just kind of want to let you know what we're going to be covering in that. So we're going to go over layering, um, how to customize backgrounds and logos. We're going to show color correction. We're going to show different ways to do camera movement. Uh, we're going to show how picture in picture works. And then we'll have some additional examples in other software. Um, so, and we will be using mostly After Effects in this demo today. Um, important thing is to remember, um, I'll probably mention this a few more times as I do this, but um, most software is going to work the same way. Um, there's definitely, After Effects is a very powerful program and has a lot of nice features on it. But the majority of stuff we'll be showing, any other program you guys might use, like Vegas and HitFilm, are going to have a lot of similarities. So most of the stuff you see today, you'll be able to do the same type of stuff in whatever software you have. So, okay, well, let me let me switch over to After Effects here and we'll get started on the demo. All right, so here is our After Effects software. Um, actually, this right now that you see on the screen is our, um, this is kind of the final final project that you'll see when we're done with it. So this is kind of what it'll look like when we're, we're done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by actually just creating a, a new, what an, an After Effects called a composition. So we're going to create a new one and kind of build this image right here from scratch to show you how we did it. So I'm just going to have to go here and create a new composition. 
So as you can see, we're starting from just this green screen image here. Uh, first thing I want to do is just kind of bring in the actual background, our newsroom set. And we're going to drop a blow below our video set. And of course, you can see you can't see it right now because we have not keyed out the green part yet. So as soon as we start keying that out, you will see how it appears behind and how the layers are going to start working. So the first step to get to that is I always like to use what they call the pen tool and mask out an area. So this what, what this does is it allows you to just kind of cut out the area you need because all this extraneous green in the video is not going to be used anyway. So there's no reason to have to worry about trying to key it out or, you know, even deal with it at all. So we're just going to do a quick, oh, apologize here, I started to do it around the wrong the wrong layer, so we need to do it on the video layer. I was on the uh, was on the background layer, so let's start that again. So we're just going to do a rough cut. You don't have to do anything clean or anything. Just kind of rough cut it out. The only thing you want to make sure is that you that you don't you don't cut out so they move their hands or any parts of their body outside the part you mask. Otherwise, they'll just disappear. So there we go with that, and that's just cut out. So now we just got a nice rough cut out, so it'll be easier to key out. Uh, let me also just one more time bring the um, desk into it now. Um, this is one of our newsrooms virtual sets, and we have a, multiple parts of it, basically. Even in each scene, there's multiple parts. So the desk is a separate part from the background layer, and that allows you to move things around. As I'll show you in a minute how the layers can affect that and how you want to place them. So, so let's just bring that so you see the desk in there now. But now what we need to do is, of course, we need to do the keying. Um, and we're going to, the um, our panelists are going to post um, some links to some more advanced keying tutorials. Um, I'm going to kind of go over a little bit here, but I'm not going to go into a whole lot of depth on keying because it's actually going it to be its own hour-long um, webinar on its own probably. Um, inside After Effects, it's just a plugin called Keylight. Um, whatever, every program basically, if it can do... Chroma keying is going to have some form of this. Um, some are more advanced and have more advanced features than others, um, but they all will have the ability. And if you know, if you shoot shoot a good clean green screen, most software is going to clean it up really well. So, well, let's get started here. So basically, what we do is we just in key light is we just take this little um, eyedropper tool and click on the green so it knows what color we want to remove. And many times, a lot, you know, just doing that will give you a, a pretty clean looking image but there is a lot of a lot of extra things you can do to kind of clean it up so the first thing I like to do is just move it over to what they call the screen mat view and what this does is this just turns into a black and white image um, and the black is all the part that will be invisible basically that it's the formerly what's green so it will be removed and anything that's white is still viewable um, and so that's the part you want to keep. And anything that's gray is going to be semi-transparent, basically. So the idea with this is we're going to use this, these tools here under screen mat, clip black, clip white, to kind of what you want to do is kind of bring the black to completely black, so it removes all the gray. So we're just going to slide this up a bit until it's completely black. And then with the white, we're just going to slide it the opposite direction until you see in her all the gray is gone. So there's no more transparency in it. So that looks pretty good there. <clears throat> Actually, again, I'm also going to be doing this pretty quickly. So if I was doing this for a you know, real project, I'd probably you know, take a little more time, zoom in, and really get the detail down good. So if it doesn't look perfect, you know, it's one of those things that you can, you can take your time to work on it. So I'm going to go back to the final result. And that's getting pretty, pretty close to how I want it to look. But there's a few little things I want to do. Screen softness, I'm going to add a little bit there. That just kind of, it kind of blurs the edges a bit to kind of start smoothing it out. I'm going to use a screen shrink and grow. Again, this works on the edges too. It just kind of remove, moves, if, starts removing the few pixels on the edge. As you can see, you can see that the edge is just kind of cleaning up a little bit, disappearing. So I'm just going to remove it a little bit. <clears throat> and then that looks pretty good. So I think I'm fairly happy with that for now. So there we have. So now we have our our news anchor key down ready to go. Uh, now this is also like a, the neat thing with all this stuff is now that you've done this on a virtual set, you can move your 
basically actor wherever you want. So they can you can place them anywhere now. You can, which is a really just neat feature. A lot of, that's part of the cool thing with virtual sets is gives you the freedom to do things like that. Um, good example now to show you too is the fact that so we talked about shooting as close to the subject as possible. Well, this is a good example of this because you can see now that she's a little large to actually be sitting on this virtual set. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale her down. So we're just going to go into the transform tools and scale. And this is just something I've learned, I believe, that you can just do with your eye. There's no, you don't need to kind of figure out like the actual mathematics of exactly the size of the of the virtual set and what she should be. If, if it looks good to you, then most everybody else who watches it is going to feel that it just fits naturally also. So I think a little, just a little bit smaller, probably right in there. So that's something you can just eye, you know, and you'll be, it'll look good. If you just get the, get it the size that looks right, then it's going to look right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the next thing I just kind of want to start showing you is the layers. Um, as you can see, we have the desk right here. I'll hide it for a second below our video and a lot of times you might want to actually move the um, desk above your video if you want the person to walk behind it or something like that um, sorry about that but but in this case you it's best to keep the video on top because you can see when I put the um, desk on top of the video in the layers that now the her paper isn't sitting on the desk so this is a good idea of how layers work. So you kind of need to figure out just, you know, as you lay them out where things should go and how they fit. Um, this this virtual set's a pretty easy one to work with the layers, but we do have some virtual sets, particularly our concert virtual set that has a whole bunch of layers in it that a lot. So you kind of really need to pay attention to where they all fit and how they all line up um, to do that. So in this case, it's best to keep the video on top. So so her papers will sit on the desk. And this is a good example also too to show how filming with a green screen draped over a table or something works because now as you can see, um, those papers are sitting on the desk and she can interact with them. And it kind of bring, brings that more realistic look to it where there's actually something physical sitting on the virtual desk. So next thing I want to do, let's go back to project, is add, is add the, some background to it. So as you can see this black area behind the desk here, that's transparent. If I click on this toggle, toggle transparency grid back here, you can see this is the area that can still be seen through. So this virtual set, I think, comes with a with its own background, but because of this, you can use any background you want to put behind there. So we actually have this um, picture of the Sacramento skyline since that's where we're located. Oops, I dragged it in the wrong place. So we're just going to drag this to the bottom. It'll be the last layer because we want it to be behind all the other layers, of course. So, so it looks like it's basically um, an image, like these are windows or, you know, a screen or something behind it. So now we're just going to move it up just to kind of get the place where we want it. Of course, this you can just kind of do use whatever image you want and place it however you want. So I think that looks pretty good there. Um, kind of a little trick I like to use when um, doing doing this type of stuff is... I'm going to add a little blur to the background there. Um, in video, people are naturally like their eye is is um, focuses on what's basically in focus. So since we have the virtual set um, and her and our anchors basically in focus, and right now also the background's in focus, it kind of can make the eye not sure which part to look at. So a cool little tool is we're going to just use the Gaussian blur here on our skyline background. We're just going to add a little blur to it. And again, there's no there's no like right or wrong way to do it. But I just want to blur it. Well, let's just say maybe about there. 4.4 looks good. But that way, now your audience, when they're watching this, their eye is going to focus more on the front part, on, the, um, on your anchor, what's going on here, instead of this really sharp background. So as you can see, when it's just a little sharper, it just kind of distracts the eye more when it's just kind of lightly blurred. So there we go. So now we're kind of getting their virtual set starting to come together. Um, so the kind of the next thing I do want to cover, though, is color correction. Um, this kind of helps will start tying, really tying everything together, your actual video that you shot with the virtual set. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to color correct her because she was shot on a DSLR and shot in a way is called a flat picture style. Basically all that means is there's very little contrast in the video when you shoot it and that allows you to basically just do a little more color correction. It just makes it easier to color correct it. So we're going to go into our effects and we're going to use um, just curves on this time. And as you can see, there's a lot of different color correction tools in After Effects and a lot of, in most programs, you're going to come over a lot of different things. There's, there's also plugins you can buy. They can do some really cool stuff like from Red Giant. They have some amazing color correction tools. So this can be, again, this can be a, this is a really advanced, uh, can be a really advanced technique for doing stuff. I mean, they're, you know, they're basically, there's professionals that do nothing but do color correction. But, you know, you don't have to do that. We, you just want to kind of start blending together. So with the curves tool, we're going to create what they, this is called an S curve. And this is just a simple technique to bring a little more contrast into the, into the, um, to your image. So basically we're just going to pull down here to kind of, it basically darkens the dark areas. And we're going to pull this up here to lighten the light areas. So just like that. So as you can see, again, where I'm doing this kind of quickly, so this is something more I'd probably take a little more time if I'm just working on a project to, to do, to get the way I want it to really look. But this is just kind of a basic way to do it and it kind of shows you. So if you see the originally how it's quite a bit more grayish and a little more washed out. So when we add a curves to it, it just kind of brings the contrast back up. So that's pretty good for now. So that looks good. But the next step is, is to really kind of start combining the, the her and the virtual set to look together, kind of like they were shot at the same time, not two different pieces. So with that, how we're going to do it is we're going to add a new layer. And in After Effects, this is called a adjustment layer. And so basically what this allows us to do is it allows us to do something to the adjustment layer that will affect every layer below the adjustment layer. So again, this is how what layers are working. So we want our adjustment layer on top. So what we do to it affects all the layers below it. So we're going to just use the um, adjustment layer, make sure that's selected, and just apply the curves to it. And we're just going to do the same thing again. We're just going to make a simple S curve on this, on the adjustment layer. We're going to just bring the darks down a little bit and the lights up just a little bit. And this one, I'm just going to do one other quick thing. On the curves, you can actually work with just the separate the the entire spectrum or just in the red green blue um, and of course alpha is for something different but on this time we're just going to raise the blue just a little bit so you see if you take it really extreme you can really make the image extremely blue but i just want just to add a little a little blue to it just so it kind of makes just look a little different really so we're just going to bring it say to there so now as you can see when we made all these these curve adjustments to it, it's affecting the entire scene. It's affecting the virtual set, basically her, and the background image back here. So if I turn it off, see what it originally looked like, and then back on with a little more of that. So that is a really good way to um, start blending it all together. I think that's one of the very important things about virtual sets that I think a lot of times people don't think about doing is, is getting it all blended together. Um, when you do that, then it just it helps your audience just, you know, they won't notice that it, they don't want to think about the fact that it, they're two separate images combined later. It just all looks like it's all belongs together as all shot at once. So this is already looking pretty good then. So it's a, you, it looks good and it kind of blends together and you've pretty much got a virtual set. But there are some more kind of advanced techniques we can do to even make it more realistic and, um, you know, kind of, it's again, kind of tricking the audience into thinking it's all one natural thing. So first part of the thing I want to cover with doing some more advanced techniques is um, kind of creating, customizing your the um, virtual set. Um, particularly in this um, virtual news set that we have, um, as you can see, it has a Night 4 News logo on it. Um, we've always gotten a lot of questions about people who want to put their own logo on it. Um, we do have another, we created another virtual set later after this one that didn't have any logos on it, and, and some people have wanted to put logos on it. So. I just kind of wanted to go over how to do that um, just so you can kind of customize your own screen. So, so here we have our uh, News 1 logo that we created um, for this to lay over the top. So we're just going to drag this down. And it's, again, an important thing on layers of where you put this. So we want to put it just basically above the desk on this one. 
So as you can see, it's actually way too large, of course, for this. So we just need to scale it down. So we're just going to go to hit S in After Effects to do the scaling. We're just going to scale it down just to get it close to make sure it fits about where this the original logo is. And again, I'd take, of course, more time if I was working, you know, just on a, my own project. I'd take a little more time here. But I know you don't want to see me get it really, take the time to get it that close. So we're going to get it close here. So now this is a kind of a really neat technique you can use in After Effects and other editing software too. As you can see, because this is kind of like a 3D environment, um, that image, the original logo, is kind of, it's distorted a bit because it's sitting like on a desk that has a curve to it. So our flat image here doesn't fit quite right. So it doesn't, it doesn't look right because it's not made that way. So a really ne neat technique you can do inside After Effects is apply something that's called corner pen. And that's under our distort effect and corner pen. So what this allows us to do is, well, basically, it's it simply just allows us to distort the image. I'm going to zoom in here so, so we can get a little, kind of make sure we get it close. So what it allows you to do is you can just grab the corners and start moving them around. So since the um, other logos already there, we're just going to kind of match up the corners to it so they're lined up in the same place. And what that'll do is just distort it to the same same angle as the other image, the original logo, basically. So you can so it looks more so it'll look natural, look like it was part of the set. So let's zoom back out and just click off that. So there you go. And again, same type of thing. Usually it take a little more time just to make sure I get it perfectly done. But there you go. So let me just turn it off. So there's the original logo. And then there's our new logo covering it up. And, you know, it looks like it belongs there. So, um, and of course, you can do that with anything on the virtual set or any any of the virtual sets adds those type of images to it. Um, for this type of thing, you just want to think about, like for this logo, since it one was already there, just kind of create a logo or download a logo that's in basically the um, about the same dimensions base it doesn't have to be perfect but just a rectangular shape you can kind of work it to fit so it doesn't have to be the exact same size and scale and everything but if you get it close you can use the corner pen tools and scaling tools to get it to match so you do it there and you could even you know change this version up here just by using getting a creating or finding a um this night four news up here just a elongated version put put whatever you want up there too so that's a nice way to start customizing a virtual set, you know, and that's a simple way and you can do a lot more advanced stuff too on any virtual set to kind of make it look exactly how you want to. So then the next thing I want to cover is a little more advanced. Just to, again, this just adds a little more realism to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, um, the background image or Sacramento skyline, and I just want it to reflect off the desk because you can see right now it's just kind of a plain blue desk and actually we we did um for this virtual set we do have i think with our um with a background that comes with it um we do have a desk that is already pre-reflected basically so if you want to if you just want to use the the stock um virtual set and reflection it's there but if you wanted to use your own background you can do your own reflection too so i'm going to show you how to do that now so basically all we need to do is duplicate the sacramento skyline image and again, this is a layers coming important. We need to make sure that this new Sacramento skyline is going to be on top of the desk. So it needs to be, its layer needs to be above the desk layer. So we're going to put it there. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the transparency of it down right now, just so we can kind of see it through it. So we can make sure we can see where the desk is, not just the, um, just the image. So what at first I'm going to do is I'm going to, Basically, I'm just going to grab this pin here and flip it since, you know, most reflections do that. And then with it being, actually, let me turn the transparent down just a little bit more so you can see. So now I just kind of want to figure out where I want to line it up on the desk, where I want the reflection to be. So I'm going to just say kind of right in there so I can see that. So I think that looks pretty good. Uh, now we're going to use the same. Let me actually turn. I'm going to turn the opacity all the way down now. What I'm going to do is same tool I used to um, mask her out, so we had a little less green screen there to work with. I'm going to do the same technique here. Um, I'm going to use my pen tool, 
I'm actually just going to zoom in a little bit. Um, and as I mentioned before, it's going to be the same thing. This is something you probably want to take a little more time with, but I'm just going to kind of do a quick masking just around the desk. So we're going to do this. And again, I take usually take more time to get a really good mask so it's right on the edge. But and this time I'm just going to do it really quickly just so you can see what it looks like. All right, okay, so there we go. So the desk is masked out now. Um, and we'll, so what we can do now is we'll, let me go back to just my other tool. I'm going to turn the opacity back up. So there we go. Let me, let me get this fitting on the screen correctly. <laughs> so as you can see, is now we have a reflection on the desk and it's masked out all the other part of it. So it's just on the desk. So what we're going to do is actually one other quick little tool in the mask that I like to use is we're just going to, um, feather the mask a little bit and all that does is basically softens the edges um, so you don't have such sharp edge and that way it just kind of blends a little nicer so we'll just do that we'll say maybe 15 that way you'll see that the edges just kind of blend and they'll they'll kind of soften right on the edge just so it blends nicer um, and then we're just gonna again you can do what you want just to get the opacity kind of where you want it and you can do you know this is just your you know your opinion where you'd like it I'm gonna just put it around there so it's not not too strong. And then the last part is I'm going to actually, the blurriness, um, the Gaussian blur we put on it from the other one, since I duplicated, it's still there. But I'm going to turn up the blurry, blurriness a little bit more. That way, since it is a reflection, usually reflections have a little more blur to them. So I'm going to turn it up a bit. Uh, so there we go. So there now we have the basically, we kind of reflected the back, you know, the, our background Sacramento skyline onto the desk. So now, there again, so it's just adding a little more realism to it um, and just kind of creates this uh, cooler effect, basically. All right. So the next thing I want to show you now is a way to do camera movement. Um, and this is kind of like the one of the final steps that really adds realism to your virtual set. Um, if it looks like kind of the camera's moving, so just another tool that really kind of starts tying everything together, making it look like it was all shot in one shot, not multiple parts put together. So the first one I'm going to show you is kind of more a simpler tool to do this. It's kind of a, um, a trick to make it look like it's moving. Um, since not all programs have the 3D, um, a 3D camera tool, most programs have a tool that allow you to do something similar to what I'm going to show you right now. Um, in After Effects, it's called a null object. So it's a new layer we're going to create. We're gonna, let's create the null object. And what we're going to do with the null object is we're going to basically just scale it in. So we're going to just hit S to go to the scale. This little stopwatch here is what allows you to, um, to basically keyframe different movements, basically. So it allows you to move something over time. So what we're going to do is we're going to click that. And it puts a little dot, as you can see, on the timeline. So that's our starting frame. And now we're just going to move, just move our scrub out to, uh, say, here, just for now, just for an example. And we're going to change the um, scale to, we'll say, 133%. Um, again, this is something you probably want to, when you're doing this, you just want to get a slight movement, you know, just to create that realism. But I'm just kind of doing it real quick just to kind of show you how it works. So as you can see right now, when you do that, really nothing happens. Um, if you can see, I know the video might be playing a little choppy. We have that problem with um, doing a webinar that doesn't play at 100%, you know, the correct speed. But if you can see it when I'm scrubbing through this, you can see you can um, see the um, red null object on the screen there. It just looks like it's kind of growing, but nothing else is really happening. So what we need to do is basically we just need to select all of our other layers and use this tool here called, it's called the whip tool. Basically what it allows us to do is connect one layer to another layer. And so what we do is we connect this, all these layers to the null object. And what's happening is that means those layers take on the properties of the null layer. And in this case, that's the scale. So now if I play this, 
And again, I apologize it's not playing super smooth, but hopefully it'll give you just a good example. As we can see, now it's zooming in. So using the null object, we just kind of get a little zoom. And that just kind of, again, adds to the realism because it can look like the camera's just kind of moving and things. And it's all moving together, so it just kind of adds that realism to it. So that's kind of the easy, quick way to do kind of trick it just by scaling it up and doing a zoom. But now I'm going to show you kind of the more advanced technique. Um, and this technique you'll find in After Effects. And you'll actually, what's really cool is, well, is it's in HitFilm 3 um, Express even, which is a free program that we'll, we'll open up and show you a little bit in a few minutes here. Um, but it even has a 3D camera tool. So uh, that's usually a more advanced um, tool that you don't find in some of the less expensive programs, but um, you can not get it for free and in this one and of course in After Effects. So I'm gonna show you how that works now. So basically we're gonna just delete the null for now. So we don't we don't need it anymore. We're not gonna be using that. So we're gonna remove the null. And what we need to do is we basically need to turn all these um, layers into 3D layers. So we're just gonna drag across here and this little 3D box now makes all these 3D layers. And that's what's gonna allow it to work with the 3D camera. So the next step is we're gonna add another layer again. This layer, we're going to add a camera layer. So as you can see, when you do this, there is actually a lot of options that you can do. Um, most of the time, you can just ignore this um, type of stuff until you get into a really advanced 3D movement in After Effects. You can do some just a, some amazing stuff in here, but most of the time, you can just ignore all these different things and just work with the, just the you know the standard what it starts with and it'll be fine but um, if you really want to learn how 3d camera stuff can work you can do some pretty amazing stuff in here so we're gonna add the 3d camera to it so what we're gonna let me switch views actually and I'm gonna show you kind of how we're in a 3d in a 3d environment now kind of so we're gonna go down to the top view and if I let me zoom if I zoom out here so what you can see is this point down here at the bottom that's our camera, and basically this is its um, angle of view looking back towards our virtual set. And just, just this line right here in the middle of the screen, that's basically all of our layers. Since they're 2D layers, they're just planes, um, but this is it. So what we're gonna do to show you kind of some cool movement is we're gonna change the um, our skyline, and we're going to move it back in Z space, basically. So where it's not going to be on the same plane as all the other layers. And this is going to help us create something called parallaxing. So as soon as I get done, I'll kind of explain how that works. So we're just going to move it back in Z space. So now you can see by this on the top view, no longer is the Sacramento skyline on the same plane as all other layers. It's pushed back. So when we go back down to our active camera, what it's going to look like, it was actually this kind of interesting. It didn't, let me actually, I want to show you. So I'm going to zoom it out a little bit more so you can see how it gets affected. So we're just going to push it back farther. So let me go back to the active view and zoom in. So basically what happens is, is now the, um, the Sacramento skyline has been pushed back in space. So though it looks looks like this, it's actually farther back than the rest of the layers. So when we when we do something with the 3D camera, you're gonna see it move differently. So now what we do is, this actually does work a bit, pretty much like the null object. We're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna transform it. We're gonna just change its position. And again, this is, as you can see, there's a lot of options on here. So you can do a lot more advanced stuff, but we're just gonna work with the position right now. So in the same way, we're gonna just add a keyframe like we did the null object. We're going to move this forward, and then we're going to change the position of the camera. So we're going to just kind of, we're going to zoom in a bit. We'll say, let's just go pretty far. And we're, let's also just kind of rotate the camera around a little bit, just so it's also moving at a slightly different angle. So there we go. So let's go back. Let's make sure this is fitting on the screen correctly so you can see all of it. So... So it's kind of the same time we just basically move the skyline background farther back in Z space and we just did move the camera around a bit. So let me go ahead and hit play so you can kind of start to see what it looks like. So 
again, sorry if it's not playing really smoothly on your computer. Like I said, we'll have a, we'll give you the project files too, so you'll be able to kind of see this how it's working um, in real time. So if you look at this, what you can see is watch how the, in the background that the um, skyline layer is moving at a different speed than the rest of them. So if you can see that tower starts to disappear into the other parts and things are moving around. So that's the parallaxing um, technique. And basically what parallaxing is, is basically a good example of that I remember hearing about this before is if you're driving down a road and there's a fence right next to you and then mountains in the background, it'll look like the fence is moving a lot faster than the backgrounds, even though you're at a constant speed. And that's, that's the parallaxing. So that's what we're creating with the 3D camera is a parallaxing um, look. So in the sense the skyline's moved in Z space farther back, it's moving at a different speed than the other layers in front, the rest of the virtual set. So that's just a, the more advanced technique to kind of create um, camera movement that kind of makes it look like the, how you naturally see things um, by things in different Z space moving at different, they look like they're moving at different speeds. So that's just a, so that's the, basically those are all the great techniques you can use to kind of really start tying the virtual set together. So let me go ahead and pause that. You know, need to keep seeing that over and over. So those, let me bring this back out, back to the front. So, so we've now tied basically, you know, the color correction, um, customizing it, um, using different backgrounds, and then all the camera movement really start to just bring the virtual set together. And this is something, of course, you can do in any virtual set. Um, you know, all those types of tools will help you create very realistic looking you know, scene with your virtual set, combining your actors and anything they're using with their props and stuff like that and really start combining it together to look to look real, basically almost look realistic. Um, just have a really nice looking virtual set. So then the one other thing I want to cover, we're going to open up here, um, hit film, and I just kind of want to show you some, some basic stuff in the hit film express. So let me get that open for you. All right, so here is HitFilm 3 Express. Um, what's really great about this program is it's it's free to download. Um, FX Home makes the HitFilm software. Um, they also make um, HitFilm 3 Pro. Um, but this Express version is actually very powerful and has a lot of features that you'll find in After Effects, actually. Um, so it's easy to download. I'm sure we'll, um, our panelists will post a link for you so you can go get go get your free version of HitFilm 3 Express if you want to try it. Um, so I just kind of want to show you a few things in it um, and basically show you the picture in picture. Uh, I figured we'd use HitFilm to show you the basics of that. Um, the nice thing is it's really works similar to After Effects. I mean, and, you know, basically all the editors that you'll be using kind of work the same way. They're all going to have a timeline. They're all going to have a layers that you can move up and down and then make adjustments to. So, this is basically just a, one of our um, our conference room virtual set with a podium. So this is perfect for like doing a presentation thing. Um, as you can see, um, it works the, much the same way. We have um, our layers here, and we can if you remove, you can turn them off. So there's um, our actor, um, this TV monitor, and the screen, and then there's the background image. And there's the podium, which is separate. So you can see we did a full body shoot of her, but since the um, podium layer is on top of her, then she can stand behind it. She could even, I'm not sure if this one we did, there is a part where she could walk out from it. She could actually walk to the side of it and then walk back behind it. So that, you know, again, helps really add that realistic look where it almost looks like she's interacting with the podium. So that's where the layers really come in great is being able to do that. And then basically it's simple doing the picture in picture is really simple with the layers is basically we have a TV monitor and then we have a little video of a graph, just kind of a generic graph thing that can be placed over the top of the TV monitor. Um, 
And of course, you can move it around again to make sure everything, you know, fits correctly. Um, HitFilm 3 has all the same tools where you can turn this out just like in After Effects. There's masks, there's effects, and it even has the same, it's, a lot of the things are even called the same, so it's transform. So you can scale the video down in the TV, whatever you and get it to fit how you want, rotate it, and do all those types of um, same techniques to get it to fit. So then if you see, if we play it, so that's kind of what it really needs. Basically, you can have video within video, basically, on these. This doesn't, you don't just need your actors that you shoot and then the virtual set background. You can have multiple um, video playing at the same time. You can even shoot multiple actors and then even at different times and then put them in the virtual set and they could be moving around. You don't have to shoot it all at once. So there's a lot of cool advanced techniques you can do that. So if I play that, you can see, you can see she's like pointing at the, at the screen and it moves in time with her. I know this isn't moving, this is moving even slower than the After Effects, just the way HitFilm renders. But it's really simple to do all this layer stuff. As long as you start to kind of learn, learning and you think about what goes on top of the other thing, it's just basically like stacking things on top of each other. You can really kind of create some really cool stuff by just under, you know, understanding where they, where they fit into it and how it can all interact with each other and move around each other. So I think that's basically what we wanted to cover today. I, um, I hope you um, learned some stuff. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Um, like I said, we, do, we, we did record this, so it, we will put that um, online available for you to watch again if you want to see, see any more or you know, if any, show it to somebody else or if anybody missed some of it, you'll be able to watch it again. Um, and I believe I mentioned at the beginning, too, we're also putting up the project files. So you'll be able to go um, download the project files and then open it up in After Effects or HitFilm and play with it basically. So you can you can make adjustments to the video we did there. So you can kind of see it really play with it and see how it all works together. Um, if there's anything you didn't know or had any questions about, um, our panelists will do our best to kind of answer them. Um, but we'll also, if we find some stuff, we'll, we'll, we'll try to email you too, if we can't get to it. We had a lot of people in the webinar today, so if we don't get to everything. We'll try to at least email you later on and help you with any questions you might've had. So again, thank you for joining us. I hope you had a, hope you learned something and, uh, we'll be putting on more of these later. So, um, let us know anything else you might want to see in our webinar. So thank you and have a great day.